Hello, Conestoga High School. I'm really excited to be here virtually with you, and it's an honor to be speaking to you today. Uh, my name is David Kim. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'd like to discuss with each of you the importance of having an entrepreneurial mindset. One of my favorite lines comes from the late Steve Jobs of Apple. He always emphasized that good artists copy and that great artists steal. So the thought did cross my mind to try to steal one of those new vision headsets to do my presentation for you, but in all seriousness, as I prepared for this, I watched a lot of TED Talks related to the particular topic of entrepreneurship. Now, there are many incredible TED Talks out there, and a few that I think are really worth watching related to this topic are ones done by Cameron Harold and Ricardo Semler. Now, I like to give everyone a little bit of background on me. Uh, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. My father studied electrical engineering, but he knew he wasn't an engineer. So he came to the United States, and like many immigrants, the first thing he decided he needed to do was to learn English. So uh, he got his first job at what was basically a Wawa. Uh, his English gradually improved, but he still didn't know what he really wanted to do. Now one night, while working the night shift, uh, he was uh, unfortunately held up at gunpoint. Uh, however, he had been trained in Taekwondo while he was in Korea. So his instincts kicked in and he amazingly disarmed this would-be robber. Uh, his co-workers were amazed, the police were amazed, and they started calling him the local Bruce Lee. Now, how was he rewarded by his manager? Well, he got a raise and he also got a promotion as the assistant manager. But my father realized several things after this horrific event. Number one, he could have died. Number two, he did not want to die in a Wawa. And number three, there seemed to be a burgeoning demand for people to learn self-defense and more specifically to learn Taekwondo. So my father vowed never to engage someone with a gun again. And he also decided to start exploring um, how he could start a Taekwondo business where he could teach people in the local neighborhood. So he soon rented a small space, uh, and his business uh, was really good. Uh, his location uh, happened to be in between a General Motors factory, uh, a steel plant, uh, a dock, and, and Johns Hopkins Hospital. And so he had a very eclectic mix of clientele. He had dock workers, factory workers, and physicians who all wanted to learn self-defense. Uh, my father was hedging his bets a little bit, so he didn't commit 100% to this venture initially. It was a side hustle at first, but the impetus to commit to this 100% came pretty soon when he was held up at gunpoint again. Now, growing up, I got to see firsthand the excitement and the stress of being an entrepreneur. Obviously, the excitement comes from building something new, from solving problems, um, and it excited me to see these things, uh, seeing my father solve problems in real time, how to attract more students, how to maximize uh, labor efficiency, how to decrease costs, how to build a brand. Uh, and he was always curious, always asking questions, always observing other businesses. Um, and now there was a restaurant uh, next door uh, to his particular uh, Taekwondo studio, and he would always observe how busy they were. And he noticed that when they were busy, so was he. And when they were slow, so was he. So he thought to himself, if he could work together with his neighbor, the restaurant, maybe they could both be busier. Suffice to say, uh, I got the entrepreneur bug at a young age. Um, I love trading uh, and selling baseball cards, football cards, Star Wars figures. Uh, and I even learned like my father, to charge uh, my neighborhood kids uh, Taekwondo. But when most people think of entrepreneurs, you know, I don't think they really think about people like my father per se. So who do they think of? Right? They typically think of uh, folks like Bill Gates of Microsoft or folks like Mark Zuckerberg of, of Facebook or, or Meta, as they call it now. Now, while I might have a, a few less zeros in the bank uh, than these two entrepreneurs, I do share with these gentlemen the fact that I went to Harvard. But unlike them, I actually do have a degree. Hopefully, we can agree that school does pay. 
Well, a few years before I was set to graduate, my father asked me what I was going to do. It's that classic question that many of you are often asked uh, as you're growing up. Uh, initially, I was planning on doing what a lot of my friends and classmates were planning on doing. Getting a job, then going to grad school, then getting a job again. But there was a question uh, that kept haunting me, a question that I kept asking myself that really bothered me. Who am I? What am I? And after a couple of summer internships in banking, I realized that this path was not for me, that this idea of getting a job didn't get me excited. So I started thinking about what I wanted to do. I knew that I loved the fact that my, my father was an entrepreneur. I loved the excitement and the challenges that came with it. So I looked around and I noticed something. You know, I had the great luxury of going to a great university and I saw that it was getting more and more stressful to get into these great colleges or any college for that matter. So I truly feel for all of you high schoolers today that it's become so, so difficult. But in that agony and pain, I saw an opportunity to help others while also making some money. So in 2000, I decided to start a tutoring, test prep, and college counseling service called C2 Education. And that business at first um, was something that was challenging, where I had to leverage all of my problem-solving skills, where I had to ask for a lot of advice from mentors. But now it's become a successful venture. And today, C2 has helped over half a million students get into their dream school. Now, this has been a, a great adventure and journey for me. And isn't that what life is really about? To fulfill your dreams and aspirations, uh, to take risks and to see the, 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 the rewards from that risk-taking? to challenge the status quo, to live a passionate and purpose-driven life. Now, I almost didn't take this path because school is often at odds with the entrepreneur's mindset. We are often told to follow the rules, and if we follow the rules, that we will be rewarded, right? By doing so, you get good grades, you get good test scores, you get a good job, and you get good pay. We're taught to follow orthodoxy and not challenge assumptions, not challenge the status quo. And it's funny, you know, I asked this question myself growing up, and my kids are always asking this question, when am I going to use this stuff that I learned at school in real life? Now, I want to make it clear that starting a business is not for everyone, right? The success rate for new businesses and ventures is very low. There's only a 10 to 20% chance of success. But the mindset of an entrepreneur is for everyone. And so what are these basic precepts of being an entrepreneur and how to look at problems from the mindset of an entrepreneur? In my opinion, there are four things. Number one, it's extremely important to be curious. As annoying it is for me when my kids ask this question, always ask why and ask why again and why again. When I think about this string of whys, I always think about Elon Musk, who revolutionized space travel in SpaceX through that basic premise. Right? Another important aspect of asking why is asking why to yourself. Why are you doing this? Why are you on this path? Why are you on this journey? And ultimately, if you can answer that why, you will have a more fulfilled and passionful life. Number two. It's extremely important to always be positive, right? Entrepreneurs see problems and failures as opportunities. When we see a problem come up, we see that there might be a need for a product or service because this failed or because this happened. And we're also learning on the fly from our mistakes continuously, always iterating and reiterating what the best solution might be for a particular problem. For example, my father took a horrific robbery experience and turned that into a business idea. Number three, it's important to be able to be a contradiction, a walking contradiction. Now, Cameron Harold, who I mentioned earlier, uh, is an incredible entre entrepreneur. Uh, he's been a famous uh, lecturer on entrepreneurship at MIT. And he funnily talks about... Um, bipolar. 
and he talks about that bipolar is the CEO disease. But more accurately, I would say entrepreneurs, more than being bipolar, have the ability to be walking contradictions. F. Scott Fitzgerald, one of my favorite authors, uh, the author of The Great Gatsby, famously wrote that the test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in the mind at the same time and to still retain the ability to function. Right? One should, for example, be able to see that things are hopeless, yet be, yet be determined to make them otherwise. You know, this is related to how we see life, and it's also related to our own behavior as an entrepreneur. I, for example, am extremely impatient, yet extremely patient. I am so obstinate and stubborn, yet I am extremely flexible. And you need this to be an entrepreneur, but in life in general, because things are not always going to go your way. You need to have resolve and flexibility to overcome the challenges that come at you. And last, but most importantly, you have to be you. Life is short, and following your passions and being happy with the choices that you make are ultimately going to lead to the best version of you. Don't let anyone or anything rob you. If any of you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email is david.kim at c2education.com. Thank you, Ken, and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.